Greetings, beloved. Hi, it's Dr. Amanda Noel, the Twin Flame Matchmaker, and you've asked yourself, should I give up on my Twin Flame? It's been so intense, so difficult. Maybe this person has come and gone multiple times. You're in a Twin Flame runner chaser dynamic, and maybe you've gone, and it's been all kinds of circles and whirlwinds, and ultimately it is hurting your heart and draining your precious energy. Well, I have six steps to help you navigate through these murky waters. The first step is to know that you are awesome. The twin flame path is not for the faint of heart. Yes, the twin flame union is the holy grail of relationships. It took me decades to find my twin flame and every day I am grateful. It's still a journey. It's still not always easy to navigate. So I want you to pat yourself on the back and say, I am awesome. Thank you for bringing light to the planet and being an Ascension Twin Flame lover. The second step is to use what I call the Twin Flame Mirror. And the Twin Flame Mirror is a tool that we teach our clients that really quickly helps them heal and therefore manifest their Twin Flame. Because ultimately, if we are full of wounding and dysfunction on a subconscious level, we are going to push away that type of energy. If we don't like our own energy, while they say misery love, loves company, it can only stand it for so long. So the twin flame mirror requires us to do the inner soul searching and asking ourselves, why am I reflecting this painful situation? What about this person is actually mirroring a current or past part of ourselves that is creating this discomfort, this pain? Instead, so often I see people chasing after what they think is love when really they're actually chasing after the pain or the idea that love can leave them. We want to pull our love and attention back into ourselves and then we can be strong platforms, pillars, and mirrors for our union. The third step is to actually really deeply study and love the lesson. So if you are being abandoned and you realize, you know what, I'm working on myself, I'm realizing my abandonment wound is coming from my early childhood when XYZ happened. I know for me, I had major abandonment stuff come up with my twin flame on multiple occasions until I healed it by doing some deep healing work on my inner child around a particular family member. And when we learn the lesson, we don't have to keep getting slapped in the face by our, by our mirror in a metaphorical sense, I hope. We don't have to go through all this pain and suffering anymore because we have healed it and risen above it. The fourth step is to heal the sacred wound. The sacred wound is ultimately the essence of our soul in the form of a wound, and we all have a sacred wound. Some people call it our core wound. We want to really understand what's showing up probably connects to a wound that we've been holding probably for eternity, but certainly since we were young children. Zero, age zero to eight is the foundation of our psyche, and that means that today's operative was built back when we were age zero to eight. So sometime when we were age zero to eight, we wanna really look at what was my most painful experience, what was my most painful kind of lesson I internalized in an unhealthy way that I'm still operating in. The great news is, is once we heal the wound or once we keep loving the wound and, and work on healing it, we don't have to completely heal it, of course, it's a journey, but we can completely alchemize that painful lead into pleasurable gold. We can go from pushing away partners to calling in the most epic partner of all, the twin flame. The fifth step is to just know that you chose this pain for a reason. You are a healer. You took on the sacred wound. You took on what's showing up in the muck of your life right now because as you get through it, you'll become a masterful healer at this so you can support others. You are a planetary healer, a light worker, a love warrior. So congratulations for showing up to do this deep work for yourself and the planet. The sixth step is just continue to heal yourself and watch yourself grow. It's like 
that nourishment of the water and the sunlight that allows the seed to grow, allows the lotus blossom to grow out of the muddy, muddy muck, and time does heal. It's really important to encourage ourselves and also to wait and have patience. The seventh step is to wait and see. Wait and see as you heal yourself, does he or she come back? As you empower and strengthen and clear out these really intense old pains and, and traumas and fears and abandonment wounds, oh my goodness, does this person start to call, call into you? Are you magnetizing this person into you? Are they treating you with the respect? That means, wow, they are your one true twin flame. They are this beautiful mirror of your wholeness and all of your chakras. You two align as the 1111 pillars, your chakras, his or her chakras, boom, coming together, weaving together the kundalini because your chakras are so solid and bright and spinning at your own unique frequencies. So it takes time to get there. Have patience do the healing work, identify the sacred wound, wait and see. And when you get there, you will know how awesome you are. The journey was and the fruits of your labor with the Holy Grail, the twin flame union. And if your wheels in your head are spinning, is this my twin flame? We have an incredible free gift that will help you look through the top 22 twin flame love signs that you will need to have to get to your twin flame. So don't miss it, it's free. Click the link and we'll send you the PDF checklist right away. Namaste, namasko.